I've been coming to the secluded area in the Kentucky wilderness for years, mainly to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. It was the kind of place that always put my mind at ease. Just last month, though, I thought I had bitten off more than I could chew. My friend Jack McKendrick accompanied me on this particular trip. We weren't close friends, but we shared a common interest in hiking and camping. It was strange how well we got along given our contrasting personalities. He, with his laid-back demeanor and kind of humor that would have you clutching your sides in laughter, whereas I was known for being introverted and a little more serious-minded. We arrived at our base camp spot deep within the dense forest and began unloading our gear from the truck. As we unpacked, Jack broke out into one of his humorous stories. So, then the bride turns to the best man and says, At least tell me you're a better dancer than him. Jack laughed boisterously, but my chuckle barely matched his. I figured it would be a typical camping trip, setting up camp, building a fire, telling stories deep into the night. However, when I returned from collecting firewood and Jack from fishing in a nearby creek, an entirely different situation arose. A shredded backpack lay on the ground near our tent. The contents were strewn haphazardly about the site as if someone, or something, had been frantically searching for something valuable inside. At first glance, neither of us recognized it as belonging to either of us or anyone we knew. The fear slowly crept in as we exchanged puzzled looks. Maybe some wild animal got curious? Jack suggested hesitantly. Maybe, I replied uneasily. But have you ever seen anything like this before? Just then we caught sight of more destruction further up where I had collected the firewood. Following the path, we found several other backpacks ripped open in a similar manner, their owners nowhere to be found. We both held our breath and tried to understand what could have caused such destruction in an area devoid of most wild animals. As night fell, Jack and I huddled around the campfire, paranoid and unsure of what to do. No cell phone reception meant we were unable to call for help. We remained on high alert, our eyes scanning every dark corner lit by flickering flames. That's when I caught what appeared to be a pair of glowing eyes watching us from the darkness. I had heard rumors of eyes that glowed red at night, but this was my first encounter with such a sight. Gone were thoughts about backpacks shredded by animals or even wanderers. This creature was something sinister, something unnatural that hunted this forest with malicious intent. Its form was grotesque, bizarrely elongated limbs that twitched erratically, a twisted face marked by a malevolent grin bearing razor-sharp teeth, part man and part wolf. Petrified, we watched as it slowly approached our camp with a wicked gait. Suddenly, it lunged at us with lightning speed, trying desperately to take hold of Jack's arm. He managed to swerve just in time, avoiding capture by mere inches. Our firearms lay just out of reach. Why didn't we have them at hand? I scrambled towards the weapons while Jack kept dodging the creature's ferocious advances. Jared, hurry! Jack yelled as the thing grabbed his leg and dragged him closer. With Jack's voice growing hoarse, I grabbed our shotgun and aimed it at the creature, my hands shaking violently. I hesitated for a moment but knew that I couldn't wait any longer. I fired a shot in the direction of the beast. The creature screeched in pain and released Jack's leg. However, instead of retreating, it seemed even more infuriated as it turned its attention towards me. What do we do now? Jack yelled, his voice strained with fear. I don't know, just keep dodging it, I responded, trying to load another round into the shotgun as quickly as I could. We needed help. We didn't stand a chance against this monster alone. Sadly, there was no cell phone reception here. Our only hope was to attract the attention of nearby campers or hikers who might be able to assist us. I loaded another round and fired it at the creature. It merely grimaced and continued its assault. The shotgun hardly seemed to make a difference. As it lunged for me again, I shouted at the top of my lungs, Help! Somebody please help us! My voice echoed through the trees, hoping anyone within earshot would come to our rescue. The creature's relentless pursuit left us no choice but to run and call for help as we went. As Jack and I fled through the forest, Branches clawed at our faces and roots threatened to trip us with every step. Soon enough, we stumbled upon another group of campers who had been attracted to our cries for help. The sight of them brought an immense amount of relief while also fueling worry for their safety. We informed them about the situation without going into too much detail. No one would believe such a creature existed, focusing on our desperate need for assistance. Something attacked us back there, 
Jack panted as he clutched his injured leg. We need help getting back to our campsite. A few of the campers agreed to go with us while the rest stayed behind as a precaution. With the added numbers, we hoped to at least be able to drive the creature away or potentially overpower it if necessary. As we returned to our campsite, it seemed as though the creature had vanished. The tension and fear in the air were palpable, but we cautiously moved forward together. Jack and I debated whether a search and rescue operation should be started for the missing backpack owners. Knowing they might have met a similar fate was unnerving and horrifying. However, given our lack of cell phone reception and one horrific encounter with an indescribable creature, we concluded our priority was getting everyone out of this forest safely. The group helped us gather our belongings and guide Jack out of the woods. We all remained silent in fear that any sound might lure that creature back to us. Several times during our trek out of the forest, I felt watched, as if those glowing eyes were still lurking in the darkness. But nothing more came for us. Once we finally reached an area with cell phone reception, we called for emergency help for Jack's injuries and reported our grisly discovery in the woods, leaving out details about the creature. No one would believe us anyway. Days later, after grueling interviews with authorities and witnessing their search parties return empty-handed, it slowly became apparent that there were no answers regarding the fate of those backpack owners or an understanding of the terrifying creature Jack and I encountered. In hindsight, I can't help but shudder at how close we both came to death or abduction by this unknown monster, whatever its motivations may have been. The faces of those other campers who helped us escape continue to haunt my thoughts. Without them, Jack and I may have shared an equally tragic fate. But those glowing eyes forever lurk within my nightmares. The knowledge that such a creature exists and remains unexplained is a chilling reminder of the vast unknowns that still comprise our world. I've always been somewhat of a skeptic when it came to the supernatural and urban legends. Call it a byproduct of growing up in an age of misinformation and hoaxes, but I learned to take everything with a grain of salt. So it was both surprising and slightly unsettling when I found myself face to face with something that defied logic. My story began a few weeks ago, on what initially seemed like an average day in rural Georgia. I was running late for work and was rushing to pick up some breakfast from a small diner just outside of town. The sun hadn't started to rise, giving everything around me an eerie stillness. The diner was located on the edge of a wooded area, not exactly the most populated place, but it made for a decent shortcut on my way to work. Despite my regular visits, the tree line still managed to unnerve me with its quiet and unassuming presence. As I took my breakfast to go, the diner's owner, an older man named Walter Callahan, cracked a joke about the local weatherman always getting the forecast wrong. I rolled my eyes and gave him my thanks before darting back into my car. Driving along the poorly lit road that skirted the woods, I suddenly felt an abrupt thud against my vehicle. Startled, I slammed on the brakes, afraid that I might have hit an animal. My pulse raced as I stepped out of the car, checking to see if anything was caught underneath or in front of it. There were no signs of impact, no fur or blood stains. Even stranger than that was what lay beside my vehicle. It was a bundle of partially torn clothing, a shirt and jeans, along with what appeared to be shredded pieces of flesh dangling off torn fabric. While alarming, there were no urgent phone calls or screams for help echoing from the nearby woods, prompting me to shrug off what might have simply been the remains of an animal attack. But as I continued my drive, unable to shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong, my suspicions were soon confirmed. In the distance, I saw a silhouette stalking along the side of the road. It was a bipedal creature with unmistakable canine features and its fur glinting under the moonlight. Startled by this horrific sight and with my skepticism shattered, I increased my driving speed, praying that whatever it was would just leave me alone. But to my utter terror, it stayed close behind me, matching my frantic pace effortlessly. As the creature drew nearer, it became increasingly apparent that this was no ordinary canine. Its twisted limbs and elongated snout looked like something out of a nightmare, and its eyes gleamed with malevolent intelligence. Panic set in as I swerved around bends and sped past traffic lights in desperate attempts to outrun this terrifying being. With every turn of the wheel, I could hear its claws scraping against the asphalt behind me a horrifying reminder of just how relentless it was in its pursuit. 
As I approached an intersection with traffic congestion, it dawned on me that if I stopped now, it might cost me my life. Taking a deep breath and stealing myself for what had to be done, I clutched onto the steering wheel before flooring the accelerator. I prayed under my breath as I charged straight into oncoming traffic, leaving behind a trail of honking cars and swerving vehicles. Letting out a heart-rending scream when seeing the shock and terror etched onto other motorists' faces, I watched helplessly as they collided with one another while trying to avoid my frantic rush to escape. My instincts kicked in, telling me to do anything within my power to survive. Without a second thought, I grabbed my phone from the passenger seat and dialed 911. As the operator answered, I struggled to speak coherently as I swerved through traffic. I yelled over the blare of car horns, explaining that I was being chased by a creature, and it was killing people. The operator tried to assure me that help was on its way, but their voice faltered. They couldn't fully comprehend the incident's severity. Regardless, they asked for my location and urged me to drive towards the nearest police station. Suddenly, the creature lunged forward and slammed into my car hard enough to dislodge my phone from my grip. It skittered across the dashboard before falling into the footwell. Glancing back in terror, I watched as the beast's twisted limbs grasped onto my vehicle with terrifying ease. The realization struck that reaching the police station alive might be impossible. Instead, my next best chance at survival was removing myself from my car and seeking refuge inside another structure. Desperate, I made an abrupt turn into a nearby shopping mall's parking lot. The creature briefly lost its grip on my car due to the sudden change in direction, but quickly pursued me again. Finding a relatively crowded area within the parking lot, I abandoned my vehicle and sprinted towards the mall entrance. Inside, people stared in confusion as I barged past them while gasping for breath. Someone shouted behind me that there was a monster outside, and panic quickly spread throughout the mall. Despite this chaotic scene unfolding around me, all that mattered was escaping this nightmare alive. As more people rushed out of stores seeking safety or attempting to catch a glimpse of the creature stalking me relentlessly outside, security guards moved to secure entrances and lock down sections of the mall. Finally visible to others in broad daylight due to their monstrous appearance, the canine-like creature paused in its pursuit. People screamed in horror upon seeing it. I turned down a side corridor of the mall and stumbled onto a security officer standing guard. Pleading for help, I tried my best to explain the situation, but my words were barely comprehensible. Regardless, he understood my desperation and led me to a secure room within the mall's bowels. He locked the door behind us and used his radio to send nearby security personnel our location. I was relieved when the police arrived a short time later, but their expressions mirrored the utter confusion I felt during this experience. Despite my claims of multiple attacks and mutilated bodies outside, there was no evidence to corroborate them, only mangled bits of clothing near my damaged vehicle. I couldn't understand how everything had vanished so quickly, the creature, its victims, and any traces of blood left behind. The police officers tried to calm me down, suggesting it had all been a hallucination due to stress or fatigue. Deep in my heart, though, I knew what had happened. Although they never found conclusive evidence that day in terms of the monster stalking me so relentlessly, suspicion hovered over me like a dark cloud. No matter how hard I tried to prove my sanity or convince others that it wasn't merely some vivid nightmare or delusion, nothing changed. But life went on around me as people soon forgot those terrifying moments shared within a busy shopping mall, some choosing to write it off as another urban myth perpetuated by those seeking attention. As time passed, People began to forget about it. Survivors went back to their lives but carried memories of that horrifying event with them. Some friends and families mourned and reminisced on those they lost without knowing what happened fully. Though relief washed over me that I survived such an ordeal, I couldn't forget the agony experienced by victims torn apart before my very eyes. As unsettling as it was knowing that a dangerous, flesh-hungry creature roamed our world, I gained some comfort in the fact that exposing it had likely saved countless other victims from its wrath. It was just another uneventful laundry day as I trudged down the long dusty path to the laundromat. My arms ached from carrying the overflowing basket of clothes. Sometimes I found amusement in not washing my clothes for three or four weeks. Just to have a small reason for complaining on nights like this, 
I went to an old, forgotten laundromat on the outskirts of Concord, New Hampshire, simply because it was closest to my isolated cabin. And there certainly wasn't any chance of running into someone who knew me here, being that it was pretty much abandoned. As I entered the dimly lit laundromat, its rusty metal door squeaked with discomfort. The faint hum of washing machines and dryers filled the otherwise silent room. One flickering fluorescent light hovered above me as I began loading up machines. Three others were scattered around the periphery of the worn-out tile floor. As I fed quarters into the last washer, I pressed play on my favorite true crime podcast and settled onto a rickety wooden bench near the front door. The voice recounting harrowing tales kept my mind occupied, drowning out eerie silence that surely would have consumed me otherwise. As my clothes tumbled rhythmically in their metal carriages, I noticed an odd scratching sound coming from outside. Casually glancing through the cracked glass window by the entrance, I squinted trying to discern what could make such noise. Adjusting my focus past my reflection in the window, my heart nearly leapt out of my chest as I saw an enormous creature loping across the overgrown grass behind the laundromat. The vile beast appeared to be something from my wildest nightmares, half man and half wolf with disturbing human-like movement, but with fur-covered limbs that ended in massive claws. Instinctively, I ducked below the windowsill while hyperventilating and thinking, how can something like this exist? I knew I should call for help, but something inside me urged not to. If anyone found out about my uncanny encounter, they'd surely think me mad. And yet, there was no denying that the grotesque thing I had just witnessed was real. As my mind raced, I hesitated to make sense of what I had seen. The creature was long gone, but its mere existence plagued me with an icy fear I couldn't shake. My heart continued pounding in my chest as it begged me to leave this forsaken place. I must be going crazy, I thought aloud to myself. Torn between curiosity and terror, I couldn't resist peeking through the window again, hoping to catch another glimpse. Instead, I saw something equally disturbing. Blood-splattered tire treads leading into the woods behind the laundromat. The gruesome scene made my stomach churn with revulsion. Gulping down the urge to vomit and trying not to let my imagination run wild, I slowly gathered my courage and ventured outside. The cool evening air did little to calm my nerves as I followed the bloody tire tracks toward their ominous destination. As I reached a tree line, a sense of dread washed over me when I realized that these tracks didn't lead into the woods after all. Suddenly, a primal howl shattered the stillness of the air around me as if on cue. Panic overtook me as it tore through my veins at record speed, demanding immediate action. My knees buckled beneath me as an unexpected quake shook the earth beneath my trembling feet. With the howl reverberating in my ears and the ground still trembling under my feet, I stumbled, quickly regaining balance. Aware that I couldn't afford to spend another second contemplating the implications of what I'd seen, I turned and sprinted back toward the laundromat. Once inside, I slammed the door shut and frantically searched for something to barricade it. Seizing a metal chair, I wedged it under the door handle, hoping it might buy me some time. As I scanned the area for any more possible escape routes, I noticed a rear exit leading to the parking lot. With one last look through the cracked glass window, I bolted towards the exit, my earlier reluctance about calling for help now overridden by terror. As soon as I got outside, I took out my phone and dialed 911. The operator picked up on the second ring, her calm voice providing me with a brief moment of solace. This is 911. Please state your emergency, she said. There's a huge creature attacking. People are hurt, and blood. Help. At the laundromat. Please send someone quickly. My words tumbled out in rapid gasps, filled with panic. All right, sir. Please calm down and tell me your location. I gave her my location while desperately glancing around for any sign of the monstrous being. Within moments, she assured me that help was on its way. With nothing left to do but wait for assistance to arrive... I huddled near one of the cars in the parking lot. The sound of sirens approaching brought a slight sense of relief until they were suddenly overwhelmed by an ear-piercing shriek from behind. I hesitated for a moment before spinning around to face whatever horrors lay beyond. To my astonishment, there stood an ordinary-looking man covered where deep gashes and wounds on his body, yet he didn't appear to be in any pain. Instead, his once-human face stared blankly ahead with an unsettling expression. Cautiously, I approached him. Sir, are you all right? 
I've called the police. They're on their way. He continued to stare, giving no indication that he'd heard me. As the sirens grew closer, I tried again to communicate with him. Did you see that thing too? What happened? His eyes suddenly locked onto mine, and in a low voice devoid of emotion, he whispered, There's no escape. It won't stop. Before I could decipher his cryptic statement, the police arrived. They quickly ushered us away from the scene and began questioning us about our harrowing encounters. In the chaotic aftermath, both victims and witnesses shared their accounts of what had transpired during the attack. Some described seeing the monstrous creature as it brutally mauled its targets without discrimination. Others spoke of individuals reduced to unresponsive shells like the man I'd encountered. Despite everyone relaying their experiences in different ways, one message remained consistent. We were all victims of an unspeakable horror that defied explanation. The police took statements and photographs, but seemed skeptical about our claims at first. However, after finding several bodies torn apart in gruesome detail at the edge of the woods near the blood-stained tire tracks, doubt turned to bewilderment, or even fear. As news broke of what transpired at the laundromat, families mourned those lost in the attack and demanded answers from authorities who were just as perplexed by the situation as everyone else. With no clear resolution to this nightmare for those scarred by it, both physically and mentally, life went on uneasily for those who survived. The whispers circulating among grocery lines and coffee shops questioned if such malevolent presences still lurked around us. But like any other unsolved tragedy, it eventually faded from public consciousness. Though I've tried to resume normalcy in my own life, the vivid memories of that night still haunt me. No one can ever truly understand what it felt like to stare into the eyes of an inexplicable and unfathomable horror, knowing that somewhere within the recesses of the unknown, it may still exist waiting for another opportunity to strike. I'm an ordinary guy, never been the athletic type or involved in anything extraordinary. No one would consider my life exciting and I prefer it that way. But it all changed during a hiking trip in Glacier National Park in Montana. If it weren't for this nightmarish encounter, I would have never thought something so sinister could exist. My friend Blake and I decided to escape from the monotonous grind of city life by spending a weekend camping in the park. The fresh air, serene landscapes, and soothing sounds of nature were exactly what we needed. As we reached our destination and started pitching our tents, we discovered our cell phone signals were weak. Who needs technology when you're surrounded by all this beauty? Blake said nonchalantly. I shrugged it off, secretly hoping that I wouldn't have to deal with any real-life horror stuff. The first day went by without incident as we immersed ourselves in the fantastic vistas of the park. We also came across some fellow campers who shared their experiences and swapped stories with us around the campfire. One camper named Cynthia shared a particularly grotesome account of her encounter with a half-eaten bear carcass near her campsite just a year ago. A natural occurrence in the wild, but disturbing nonetheless. On the third day of our trip, Blake and I ventured further along an obscure trail that seemed to stretch endlessly into dense greenery. The path was strewn with rocks jutting out at weird angles, forcing us to carefully navigate each step. Just as fatigue began creeping in and the sun slowly disappeared behind clouds cloaking the evening sky, we stumbled across the remains of a makeshift shelter made from broken tree branches or what appeared to be one anyway snapped tree branches. Curiosity got the better of us as we approached the dilapidated structure. As we absorbed its grotesque sight, gnarled twigs twisted irrationally into an unrecognizable mess, the ambiance suddenly became eerie. The once soothing atmosphere morphed into something straight out of a horror film. What do you think happened here? I asked Blake, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. I don't know, man. It looks old, but I can't imagine who or what would make something like this, Blake replied, his voice trembling. Before we could ponder further, a low growl resonated in the surrounding woods and stopped us in our tracks. Our blood ran cold as we tried to identify the source of the sound against our growing anxiety. It's probably just a coyote or a fox, Blake whispered nervously. But we knew it couldn't be true. The hair-raising growl was nothing like any animal we had ever heard before. A sudden rustle in the bushes startled us as we turned our flashlights towards it, 
only to be met with unfamiliar glowing eyes peering back at us from the darkness. Our heartbeats raced as we stared into those malicious orbs, neither fully human nor wolf-like, but some grotesque combination of the two. Blake managed to recover his senses first and shouted at me to run as he too began sprinting away from the creature emerging from behind the bushes. In moments of pure terror, I followed his lead and tried my best to focus on fleeing rather than imagining what lurked behind me. As adrenaline took hold, my senses heightened, and through labored breaths I could hear it chasing us with a viciousness I had never experienced before in my life. It didn't matter that our legs burned with each step or that our lungs begged for mercy. All that mattered was staying ahead of whatever monstrous creature was pursuing us with such tenacity. My panic intensified when I caught sight of deep claw marks etched on tree trunks during a momentary distraction. We were too deep into its territory, and it wouldn't be long before it caught up. Though wanted to scream for help, we knew it would be futile. There was nobody nearby, and any cry would only alert the creature to our exact location. As we raced through the woods, the twigs snapped beneath our feet and branches whipped our faces. A thought flashed in my mind. If we called for help, there could be a chance someone would hear us, despite being seemingly isolated. But as quickly as the thought came, it vanished under the weight of fear. Calling for help could lead this monstrous creature straight to us. We spotted a small cabin up ahead and decided to take refuge inside. Barren and dusty, it offered little protection, but at least there was a door to slow down whatever hunted us. Keep quiet, Blake whispered as we listened for any signs of the creature's approach outside. The creature circled the cabin, sniffing around with intention. Its grotesque features became crystal clear as it passed by a window. Pale and mottled skin stretched tightly over bulging muscles long limbs covered in scars and scratches, and a ghastly face that was both human-like, yet utterly unnatural. Its yellow eyes caught sight of us through the window before it let out an enraged snarl and began slamming against the door with merciless force. We have to escape somehow, I said while searching for another exit. We spotted a small window near the back of the cabin which appeared just large enough for us to crawl through. I scrambled through first and then helped Blake out, hoping to not draw attention from the front door's onslaught. We moved silently, but quickly through the woods, not knowing what direction to take or where safety could be found. We stumbled upon a dirt road that indicated civilization might be closer than we thought. But as we emerged from the woods' shadows, the creature wasn't far behind. With speed only something so unnatural could possess, it intercepted us on the road and launched an attack aimed at Blake. The beast tore into his arm with razor-sharp claws, its sinister gaze never leaving mine as it ripped away flesh down to bone. My horror was immeasurable, but my mind urged me to stay as silent as possible and begin moving away with quiet steps. The creature toyed with its victim for a moment, before lunging in my direction once more. It hesitated for a split second as it caught sight of headlights in the distance. A truck fast approaching. I wasted no time. Gathering all my strength, I pushed Blake away from the path of the speeding truck. The driver noticed too late what lay in its path and slammed into the grotesque creature. The air filled with a sickening crunch and an unearthly screech as the beast was flung aside, bloodied and mangled. For the first time that night, a glimmer of hope shone through the darkness. The truck driver rushed out of his vehicle to help us. Fear, shock, and confusion etched across his face as he took in the scene before him and our injured state. "'We need an ambulance!' I shouted, rousing him from his shock. He called for help while I focused on keeping Blake conscious until the paramedics could arrive. Police came along with the ambulance, collecting both our testimonies but offering no explanations about what had attacked us. They seemed skeptical at best, perhaps believing we'd encountered an unknown animal or escaped zoo exhibit. The medics tended to our wounds and transported Blake to the hospital for further treatment. I accompanied him to ensure he received proper care despite not knowing if our ordeal was really over. In the end, there were more questions than answers. That creature remained shrouded in mystery, as any investigation that followed led to dead ends. We survived that horrifying encounter, but we will always bear scars both physical and emotional, a permanent reminder of that fateful night when an unimaginable terror pursued us relentlessly through the dark woods.
It was supposed to be a day of relaxation and leisure, but somehow my life took an unpredictable detour. My neighbor, Tim Kirkland, had invited me to join him for a day at his family's cabin near the eerie Romeslow Ridge. To be honest, it was quite the unexpected invitation. We didn't hang out much other than borrowing sugar or garden tools. Still, I could use a break from the demands of my daily grind. Upon arriving at the remote cabin, I was struck by its absolute isolation. The surrounding forest was thick with trees and vegetation in every direction. Swallowing my skepticism, I decided that it was just the escape I needed. We spent the whole day hiking trails and exploring nature's local wonders, eventually putting up some logs for a bonfire when the evening approached. As we sat around the fire sharing stories and snacking on roasted marshmallows, Tim brought up a peculiar and gruesome event that had taken place in the area just two months prior. A series of missing person reports had sent shockwaves through the neighboring towns. What piqued my interest was that these people were last seen within miles of where we currently sat around our little fire. Tim leaned in closer, face illuminated by dancing flames casting an eerie glow on his face as he whispered, The weirdest thing is, some claim to have seen something strange lurking within these very woods. As night fell upon us with dark shadows crawling along the ground, I shook off my growing discomfort, chalking it up to paranoia from Tim's creepy tales. Resolutely, we settled into our respective rooms with paper-thin walls separating us. Sleep seemed elusive as I became more restless by the minute. Every branch snapping, leaf rustling outside, fueled my imagination into overdrive. Figuring fresh air might help clear my mind, I silently stepped out of bed and slipped on my shoes before making my way outside. As I stood on the cabin's creaky wooden steps, I glanced towards the tree line. The residual smoke from the smoldering bonfire seemed to blur my vision. My breath caught, throat clenched when my gaze landed on a humanoid figure in the distance, just at the edge of the tree line. The creature moved with unnatural quickness and grace, half man, half beast. It was covered in thick, matted fur with sharp fangs protruding from its elongated snout. While it was only illuminated by moonlight, I could make out its muscular build and terrifying gaze that seemed to sear right into my soul. Afraid this creature had heard about the missing people and connected the story to me, I scurried back into the cabin as quiet as possible. Rushing to Tim's room, I shook him awake in my desperation. Dude, you gotta wake up, I whispered harshly. There is something... some creature outside. Remember what you told me about those missing people? Bleary-eyed and clutching his head in a full-fledged headache from the sudden wake-up call, Tim simply replied, You're letting your mind run wild from my stories. Torn between calling for help or waiting it out, I couldn't shake the feeling we were being hunted. Ultimately, we decided not to alert others lest it raise concern or draw unwanted attention from our potentially deadly neighbor. Suspicion lurked around every corner as we stayed within the confines of the cabin for hours on end. The creature's malicious presence clung like tar outside our door while Tim changed his mind regarding calling for help. But alas, he couldn't get a signal on his cell phone. A cacophony of crashing inched closer to our sanctuary as we held our breaths. It sounded like an entire grove of trees collapsing on themselves. We realized with a start that this creature was making its way to us paving a path of destruction just to get closer. As the sounds of destruction grew louder, Tim and I locked the cabin doors and windows, hands shaking. Our ears were perked for any sign that the creature was planning to attack. The feeling of helplessness began to consume us both. Why aren't we calling for help? I whispered to Tim. It won't do any good. We are hours from civilization and no one will believe us, he responded quietly. Our only course of action was to wait and pray that the creature would lose interest. We huddled in the corner of the main room, whispering feverishly about our next move. Fate was not kind. The booming crashes outside suddenly ceased as an eerie silence enveloped us. A low, guttural growl resonated through the cabin walls, as if hell itself had arrived at our doorstep. Tim and I froze in fear, as crashing through our only barricade, the monstrous creature appeared before us. The creature growled, showing its monstrous fangs coated in saliva as its piercing eyes seemed to memorize our faces. Its heavy breathing filled the room as it sniffed the air between us, no doubt contemplating its next move. 
Our hearts pounded against our chests like sledgehammers as we waited for the inevitable attack. In one swift motion, it lunged towards us, grabbing Tim by his shoulder. He screamed out in pain as its claws dug deep into his flesh. Panicking, I grabbed a nearby fire poker and swung it with all my might toward the creature's head. Despite my fear-mandated rule of not fighting back, survival instincts took precedence. The poker struck its skull with a sickening crack but did little more than slow it down momentarily before it flung Tim across the room like a rag doll. Blood pooled on the floor around Tim's crumpled form. The grisly sight catapulted me into action. Taking advantage of the monster's momentary distraction caused by the fire poker, I raced out the front door and into the waiting darkness. The forest seemed colder and more menacing than it had been hours prior, but there was nowhere else to go. The creature pursued me relentlessly, its guttural growls and snapping jaws filling the night air like a drumbeat of death. As my energy began to wane, I stumbled upon a shallow ravine tucked away in the darkness. Climbing down as quickly and quietly as possible, I prayed that this natural refuge would remain undiscovered long enough for dawn to reveal an escape route. My prayers would prove futile when I felt vibrations beneath my feet. Moments later, anger-filled snarls reached my ears as the creature clawed its way through the earth and into my makeshift hiding place. Before the final blow could be struck, police sirens filled the once quiet night. Startled by the foreign sound, the creature paused briefly and retreated into the darkness. As it disappeared, a lucky break revealed itself. Tim had managed to use his remaining strength to dial emergency services before succumbing to his wounds. The following days were filled with horror and disbelief while we recounted our tale to law enforcement. Friends and family mourned Tim's untimely demise amidst their struggle to understand what had transpired in those dark woods. In time, life resumed some semblance of normalcy when authorities deemed it was safe to return home. As for me, I am left with haunting memories of that fateful night my dear friend's brutal end at the hands of an unknown monster lurking in the shadows. Forever etched into my mind is an awareness that darkness holds untold dangers, that our world is filled with terrifying creatures we cannot hope to understand or escape. Living on a secluded property has always had its ups and downs. On one hand, you have your privacy and peace. On the other hand, you feel incredibly isolated. I remember waking up one morning to the faint sound of gunshots in the distance. Probably someone hunting in the woods nearby. This wasn't out of the ordinary. Life here in rural Louisiana went on as usual for me. My name is Dale Morrison, and I ran a small farm. Settling down for breakfast, I mindlessly chewed on my toast while scrolling through my phone. Out of nowhere... I heard a car door slam shut outside. Startled, I looked up to see a local deputy sheriff approach my door. Dale? Hey there, buddy. The deputy, Frank Lindley, greeted me as I opened the door. Hey, Frank, what brings you out this way? I asked, worried about why he'd come all the way out here. Just checking up on folks in the area. There's been some... unsettling incidents lately, he said hesitantly, which immediately raised red flags for me. Unsettling incidents. What do you mean? People are reporting sightings of some strange creature attacking their livestock. A large dog or wolf-like thing that's able to stand on two legs. He trailed off. Are you serious? I asked skeptically. Yeah, well, listen to this. Someone captured part of it on their home security footage, Frank said as he handed me his phone. I hesitantly played the video and saw what looked like a tall, wiry figure with canine features moving rapidly towards some grazing sheep before it cut off abruptly. That's insane, I mumbled as I handed back the phone. Just be careful out here and give us a call if you see anything unusual, Frank advised as we departed. The next day was unremarkable, but as the sun dipped below the horizon, an eerie fog rolled in. I finished up the last of my chores and headed towards the house when I heard an unearthly howl echo through the fog. It sent a shiver down my body, but I brushed it off. Probably just a coyote, I muttered to myself. The night went by peacefully until I woke up to the sound of distressed clucking from my chicken coop. In a panic, I grabbed my shotgun and ran outside. As I got closer to the coop, I could see that one side had been ripped apart. A strange guttural noise drew my attention towards a hulking figure in the darkness, 
long, awkwardly bent limbs moving like a poorly operated marionette. My heart pounded as fear took over. Without another thought, I fired a shot at the creature. It screamed in pain and turned on me with fury in its eyes. Now completely terrified, I bolted back to the house and locked the door behind me. My hands shook as I tried to dial 911 on my phone, but here in rural Louisiana, cell service is spotty at best. All of a sudden, loud banging echoed against the door. Frank! Frank! My voice quivered as I desperately yelled out for my friend who was also a deputy sheriff. I barricaded myself in an upstairs bedroom shotgun at the ready. The banging persisted outside for what felt like hours but eventually stopped altogether. I stayed holed up in that room until daylight crept in through the window cracks. As the sunlight began to fill the room, I cautiously stepped out and glanced around. Surprisingly, the house didn't have any signs of damage. I moved quickly, checking the entire place, and realized that it must have been focusing solely on trying to break down the barricaded door. I knew I had to alert authorities of what had happened. The odds of reaching them through phone were still slim, but with a little luck, the situation could be resolved. But as I held my phone on my shaking hands, there was no luck, no signal at all. As the unfamiliar feeling of helplessness began to sink in, I knew. My only choice was to leave and find help before this thing comes back. I grabbed my keys, some clothes, and other essentials before getting in my truck. The drive in rural Louisiana can be a long one, and stopping isn't an option with that creature lurking around. As I drove away from the farm, I saw a car coming towards me. It was Frank. Relief washed over me as I waved him down. Frank, my God, I exclaimed. There's something you need to see. Frank's brow furrowed in concern as he listened to my story about last night's events and the creature. We can't let this thing harm anyone else, he said with determination. We drove back to my house to survey the damage and plan our next move. As we stepped into the backyard, we found pieces of wood and torn netting scattered around where my chicken coop used to be. The evidence backed up my story well, while making Frank even more unyielding in catching the attacker. You know what, Frank said sternly. We're going to set up watch here tonight. See if that thing comes back. But Frank, it might kill us. My voice broke with fear. He thought for a moment before responding resolutely. We'll call in some backup. Stay vigilant. And if we feel threatened, we can retreat. That night, our small group of officers huddled in my house, guns and equipment at the ready. Tension filled the air as we stared out into the dark, waiting for any sign of the creature. Hours crept by with no sight or sound. Just as I began to question whether it would appear, a heart-stopping growl echoed outside. Everyone positions, Frank shouted. With our firearms pointed towards the noise, we saw it, that monstrous figure emerging under the moonlight. My entire body trembled as I gripped onto my shotgun desperately. I couldn't help but remember the pain I had caused it before and wondered if it had come back specifically for me. The creature charged at us with alarming speed, its gnarled limbs extended. Frank's voice boomed through the chaos. Shoot! A barrage of gunfire erupted as we unloaded our weapons. The creature twisted and contorted in pain but didn't fall. Instead, it lunged towards one of the officers, savagely ripping his torso apart. As his blood splattered everywhere and screams filled the air, Frank ordered a retreat. We staggered back into the house, locking doors and barricading windows, trying to catch our breaths. It wasn't long before we heard scratching at the walls and relentless banging on every entrance while our terror grew exponentially. We came to understand that conventional weapons would not suffice to overcome that creature. So Frank did what he knew best. He reached out to other authorities to make them aware of this menacing threat lurking in rural Louisiana. Unfortunately for Officer Thomas, who had been savagely killed by that beast, he would never witness it being subdued eventually. His sacrifice would become a chilling reminder of what could potentially lurk beyond our comprehension in these dark corners of the world. For as long as I can remember, I've always been a skeptic. The type of person who brushes off ghost stories and shrugs at horror movies. I never expected that my skepticism would finally meet its match during a trip to the desolate wilderness of the Ozarks. My name is Randall Kitchen, an unassuming name for an equally unassuming man. 
While I had always enjoyed exploring the forests and trails, something about that fateful excursion was different right from the get-go. My longtime friend, Virginia Page, joined me on this trip as we wanted to experience something new and fascinating together. It wasn't long before our adventure took a weird turn. We encountered a series of gruesome animal remains scattered around the trail, the handiwork of some deranged predator. Although it made us deeply uncomfortable, we felt compelled to continue this harrowing expedition. After all, we couldn't just turn back now. The heavy atmosphere only grew more intense as unnatural growls echoed throughout the woods. The noises didn't sound like any known animal. It was as if they came from a beast straight out of a legend. The eeriness continued to escalate when we stumbled upon an ancient house deep within the forest. Unbridled curiosity took over us, and despite our initial hesitation, we approached this enigmatic structure. As soon as we swung open the creaky door, our senses were assailed by a mixture of decay and wet earth. A familiar hair-raising growl reverberated through the rotting walls as Virginia whispered to me, Randall, do you... do you think this might be where that thing's been hiding? I don't know, I replied quietly, but we need to be cautious. Our exploration of the decrepit house led us to something far more sinister than what transpired outside. A makeshift laboratory filled with bottles of unidentifiable chemicals and diagrams drawn on the walls seemed to be the work of a madman. And that was when we saw it, a creature that defied all logic. It stood on two legs and had a face twisted into a grotesque snarl, blending features of both man and wolf. Unsure if it noticed us or not, we backed away slowly when its yellow eyes focused on our presence. In a split second, the creature let out a gut-wrenching screech and lunged towards Virginia. Instinct kicked in as I threw myself between my friend and the feral beast. It clawed at me with monstrous strength as my blood stained the wooden floor. Struggling to reach for my trusty knife, Virginia managed to open fire with her hunting rifle, sending the creature reeling back in pain. Breathing heavily, we stumbled out of the house and stared at our open wounds in panic. The beast's unnatural howls were fading into the distance, but we knew it wouldn't be long before it returned for us. We need to get out of here, I gasped as we dashed through the forest. We don't stand a chance against that thing. Despite our injuries and fear, we persevered, sprinting through seemingly endless woods. Just when it seemed like hope was lost, I spotted our campsite up ahead. The truck's over there, I shouted to Virginia, pointing towards our only means of escape. However, I knew deep down that the monster wouldn't give up so easily. And there it was again. Those demonic yellow eyes appeared in between shadowy tree trunks, outlining its ghastly shape, mangled fur stained with blood from its unspeakable murders. With no time to spare, I shoved Virginia towards the truck, yelling, Go! Get it started! As she fumbled with the keys, my eyes darted across the dark woods, searching for that monstrous creature. Suddenly it burst out from the trees, charging at us with an eerie mix of rage and hunger. Its elongated limbs allowed it to move at a terrifying speed as drool dripped from its hideous, snarling mouth. "'Why aren't you calling for help?' Virginia shouted as I slammed the truck door shut and climbed into the driver's seat. "'We don't have any time,' I replied, my voice frantic. "'That thing is too fast, and we're too far away from any potential help right now.' Fear filled her eyes, but she nodded in agreement. Just as we began to speed away in our truck, the grotesque beast writhed in agony on the ground. It was clear that Virginia's bullet wound was taking a toll on it. We drove as fast as we could manage on the worn dirt road, trying to put as much distance between ourselves and the nightmarish creature. Our minds were inundated with horrific images of the monster's brutal murders. Faces of innocent victims flashed before our eyes every time we blinked. I swerved aggressively to avoid a fallen tree in our path, unable to suppress a guttural cry. The accident scene looked far too familiar, it was exactly where we had stumbled upon an earlier victim of the monster. My pulse raced as I glanced back at Virginia. They must have driven right past it, she muttered under her breath. Our journey through the dark woods seemed endless, yet we pressed on regardless. Less than an hour later, we reached a small town where we hoped to find refuge and assistance. As we pulled into a gas station, our bodies trembled with exhaustion and fear. The attendant noticed our obvious injuries and the truck's damage. With a concerned expression, he asked, 
Are you folks all right? Not wanting to alarm him with the shocking truth of our terrible ordeal, we simply answered that we had been attacked by some wild animal, neglecting to mention the roguish, sanguinary creature we had encountered. Do you have a phone? I questioned. We need to contact the police. The attendant nodded, gesturing to a phone mounted on the wall. As I dialed the local sheriff's office, I couldn't help but ponder our decision not to pursue answers about this horrifying creature. Why aren't we investigating this? Virginia asked quietly as she bandaged her injuries. Why are we just running from it? We barely survived that encounter, I replied, not taking my eyes off the phone in my hand. We're not equipped to take on something like that beast. Imagine facing it alone. It's best for everyone if we just report it and let trained professionals handle it. Knowing fully well how strong and fast the monster was, we doubted whether even professional law enforcement would be able to contain such a menace. Memories of its savage mauls haunted us relentlessly, images that neither of us would ever forget. Taking a deep breath, I relayed our story to the sheriff as rationally and coherently as possible. We intentionally left out several gruesome details, but shared enough for him to understand that immediate action was necessary. Days later, as news spread in our small community about more human attacks perpetrated by an unknown assailant, our very own terrifying monster, we knew that what we had witnessed in those dark and twisted woods was only the beginning of something much more sinister. And despite our greatest terror and knowing that our lives would never be the same again, we found solace in knowing that at least we had escaped with our lives, even if those of countless victims were claimed by that wretched and furiously vile beast. I'm Taylor Benson, an ordinary guy who does janitorial work. Large, nondescript city office buildings in a secluded part of Michigan have always been my domain. Work keeps me busy during the day, and I pride myself on my punctuality. However, the bizarre thing that happened one late night will forever be etched into my memory. It all began with a sticky note. My boss left it on the counter asking me to clean out the storage rooms in the basement level of an old building we solely used for storing things that no longer served any purpose. Little did I know how this simple task would change everything. Descending into the dimly lit depths of the forsaken structure, I was greeted with a musky odor that permeated the air. The storage rooms were cluttered with boxes, some containing dated electronics from an era gone by, others just stacks of unused supplies. I immediately began sorting through the mess with precision and purpose. The eerie basement level grew darker as the daylight disappeared outside, leaving only artificial light to illuminate my surroundings. My co-workers, Hannah Stevens and Carter Peterson, had agreed to stay late to assist in clearing out some of these storage rooms. As I meticulously moved around with my inventory chart in hand, ticking off items as I went, I laughed at a joke Hannah made about a dusty old fax machine. While our progress was slow and steady, my heart stopped when I heard Carter let out a sharp gasp from across the room. Whipping my head around, I watched as he stumbled back onto some boxes near a pile of discarded wooden pallets. What's wrong? Hannah asked as we rushed to his side. I saw something outside, just for a moment, he barely managed to whisper in response, his eyes wide with fear. I couldn't help but dismiss it as just his mind playing tricks on him due to our spooky surroundings. We decided to take a break, during which we exchanged stories to lighten the atmosphere. Things returned to normal, and we continued with the task at hand. As I ventured deeper into the rooms filled with cobwebs, I couldn't help but feel uneasy, Moving away from my co-workers, I turned a corner and nearly jumped out of my skin. In front of me stood a grotesque creature that was neither man nor wolf. It was a bizarre hybrid covered in matted fur, with the head and paws of a canine and the body of something more humanoid. Frozen in terror, I realized it wasn't just Carter's mind playing tricks. This malicious monster stared right through me, its yellowed eyes thirsty for violence. As it took one menacing step forward, my instincts kicked in. Run! I screamed, reaching for Hannah and Carter. The creature lunged at us with unnatural speed, baring its razor-sharp teeth. Carter tried to fire his trusty pocket pistol to no avail. The bullet appeared to not have penetrated whatever demonic skin this beast possessed. We clambered over crates and scrambled towards the exit, 
our hearts pounding with every second that passed as we tried our best to escape whatever unholy hell this creature represented. We darted around abandoned boxes as the beast leaped from storage pile to storage pile with predator-like agility, its gruesome visage ever present in our minds as it attempted to tear us apart at every chance it got. There's no way we can outrun that thing, Hannah panted as we raced up the stairs. We don't have time to call for help, Carter wheezed as the erratic sound of his phone flew past me down into the abyss below. The fear in his voice matched perfectly how I felt inside. That sinking sensation that overcame me as I realized our chance for escape was continually dwindling with each passing second. I urged them to fight on, knowing we had no choice but to brave the unknown. The creature continued to hunt us relentlessly, using its unsettling combination of human cunning and animalistic brutality. It closed in on Hannah, who found herself cornered by stacks of crates. In that moment of desperation, I remembered the old fire extinguisher we had seen earlier near the entrance. Grabbing it, I instinctively aimed and discharged the foam at the creature, temporarily blinding it and forcing it to retreat. Move now! I yelled, and the three of us pushed our way past the momentarily stunned creature, running back towards the warehouse entrance. Why aren't we calling for help? Hannah cried as we raced through the maze of abandoned crates. Our phones, we left them in our coats! Carter replied, realizing we had no way to call for help due to our carelessness. We finally burst through the exit, slamming the door shut behind us as we gasped for breath. Seconds later, the grotesque beast slammed into the door with furious strength but failed to break through. Knowing that we needed help and couldn't retrieve our phones, we quizzically scanned our surroundings for anywhere safe to hide. Thankfully, we noticed a nearby police station in the distance. We need to get there, I stated urgently, pointing towards the station. As we sprinted towards safety, I glanced back at the warehouse only to see that the creature had now broken through the door and was in pursuit. Its monstrous power and agility allowed it to move with terrifying speed as it tore through anything in its path. Arriving at the police station out of breath and in a state of sheer panic, we desperately tried explaining what had happened to us to an officer on duty. Initially skeptical due to our wild story and disheveled state, he eventually agreed to call for backup after seeing Carter's wounds from before. An armed emergency response team was quickly dispatched, arriving at the warehouse, guns drawn. We urged them to be careful while giving further descriptions of whatever unholy hybrid this creature was. The officers stormed into building ready for an intense confrontation but were caught off guard by their disgusting reality. A macabre assortment of dismembered body parts from countless victims had been strewn all over the warehouse floor clearly a sign that this creature had claimed numerous lives. Can you identify the creature? Do you know what it's after? One of the officers asked us, trying to gain some understanding of the situation. We don't know what it wants, but it's deadly. I responded, remembering just how close Hannah had come to being its next victim. As the police searched the warehouse, ensuring we were safe for the time being, a final report came in. The creature had vanished. They could not find any sign of its presence within or around the vicinity. We were informed that due to our traumatic experience, we should go home and try to get some rest. But none of us could escape reality. Innocent lives had been taken by this merciless monster. We never knew what happened to that vile beast or why it targeted our warehouse, but our lives would never be the same again. We were forever haunted by the terror we faced and the realization that there would be no real justice for those who had lost their lives so brutally at hands of that horrifying creature. We bonded over our shared experience and vowed to share an unbreakable bond with one another. But every day thereafter seemed surreal as we tried to move forward and cope with the fact that somewhere out there lurked an unspeakable horror capable of striking again whenever it so desired. I was never a nature enthusiast but I couldn't resist the allure of the pristine water and mild weather that Crystal River in Florida had to offer. It was known for its clear, sometimes turquoise waters and wealth of wildlife, particularly manatees. My buddy Tim, who was as avid an outdoorsman as they come, somehow managed to convince me to accompany him on a week-long canoeing trip there. It began as a remarkably typical trip. We paddled the smooth waters, surrounded by lush vegetation and moss-laden trees, the soundscape of rustling leaves and chirping birds created a soothing atmosphere. 
Tim brought out the portable grill and cooked some grilled veggies that were surprisingly appetizing despite their charred exterior. Day four of our trip took an unexpected turn when we decided to veer off course and explore one of the small inlets that branched away from the main river path. At first glance, it seemed like just another peaceful tributary. There was nothing inherently daunting about it. Nevertheless, it had that allure of untouched wilderness. As we paddled deeper into the inlet, sun poking through tall trees cast long shadows across the water's surface while the buzzing of insects grew louder. Tim retrieved two sandwiches wrapped in foil from his bag and tossed me one. Chicken salad, he declared proudly. Courtesy of yours truly. We chuckled over our meal as we took in our secluded surroundings. By late afternoon, we reached a fork in the river where we decided to make camp near a small clearing adjacent to a thick forest. To pass time before sunset, we fished for our dinner with some live bait and spinners. As night fell, we cooked our catch over a fire despite being awful at starting one without proper tools. As I laid down in my tent for the night, something felt off. It was eerily quiet outside. Even Tim mentioned this sudden silence before retiring to his tent, reassuring me that nature often plays tricks on the ears. I tried to ignore it, writing it off as an overactive imagination, and eventually drifted off to sleep. I awoke with a start in the middle of the night to a snapping twig outside the tent. Holding my breath, I hesitated to wake Tim, but my curiosity was getting the best of me. Slightly trembling, I grabbed my flashlight and slunk out of my tent. The flashlight's beam illuminated the area around our campsite, revealing a trail of mutilated fish and scattered fishing gear. It seemed as if someone or something had taken our catch from earlier that evening, only to rip it apart brutally. Not daring to breathe, I spotted what looked like large paw prints mixed with human footprints leading deeper into the forest. Terrified that our attacker might still be lurking nearby, I rushed back to my tent and shook Tim awake. His usually calm demeanor disappeared as he took in the grisly scene before him. We have to leave this place, I whispered urgently, not really understanding why we couldn't ask for help. Tim agreed without hesitation, and we quickly packed up our belongings before launching our canoes back onto the water. As we paddled farther from the site, however, we heard an unnerving sound pierce through the night air, a gut-wrenching howl with an almost human-like quality. The sound seemed to be coming from all around us. We couldn't pinpoint its source. My heart raced as Tim whispered under his breath. What on earth was that? Suddenly, something large splashed into water several yards ahead of us. We came face to face with a creature unlike anything we'd ever laid eyes on. A monstrous blend of man and wolf with razor-sharp teeth and menacing yellow eyes that stared right at us. With every ounce of strength left in our bodies, we paddled furiously, desperate to distance ourselves from whatever it was that had been stalking us. The beast clawed its way through the water, closing in at an alarming rate, while all we could do was keep paddling. Our boat heaved violently as we crashed against submerged tree trunks and boulders, but we dared not stop. The creature gained on us with no signs of slowing down, sheer determination shone in its eyes as it persisted in chasing us through the murky waters. Our canoes carved a path through the dark water, but it was obvious we were tiring. In a desperate attempt to survive, I suggested to Tim that we head for the nearest road, hoping to find help from any passing motorists. Good idea. Let's do it, he panted as we changed direction, narrowly avoiding a low-hanging tree branch. As we closed in on the bank of the river, I noticed a faint light flickering in the distance. Heart pounding, I drew Tim's attention to the light, hoping it would be our salvation. We charged out of our canoes onto land, desperately trying not to trip over roots and rocks while making our way toward the source of the light, which turned out to be an old gas station. Hysteria took over as we saw people around, finally someone who could help us escape this nightmare. We burst through the doors into the dimly lit store, taking no time to apologize for scaring the few customers present. Please help us, I gasped at the first employee I saw. We were attacked by... something. It chased us through the river. The employee initially looked doubtful, but ultimately felt compelled by our sheer panic and exhaustion. He picked up a phone and dialed 911. We need help out here, he pleaded calmly into the receiver. Some folks were attacked by an unknown creature down by the river. While waiting for law enforcement and paramedics, we noticed that our wolf beast pursuer hadn't followed us further ashore. 
All that was left were distant echoes of the previous night's blood-curdling encounters to haunt our minds. Officers arrived on site within minutes and listened as we recounted our story, describing our attacker's features in explicit detail. They nodded solemnly as they took note of everything, but offered no explanation or suggestions about what we had encountered. As officers escorted us back to the campsite, we noticed that the footprints and mutilated fish remained as gruesome reminders of our terrifying ordeal. Paramedics treated us for minor injuries and exhaustion, while authorities conducted a thorough investigation throughout the area. In the following days, we were questioned and re-questioned, but no one had any adequate answers or explanations for what we had experienced. Reports started circulating in the media and local town about a beast dwelling in the depths of the woods, but nothing definitive ever surfaced to explain its origin or purpose. Rumors of the creature became a local mystery, shared in hushed whispers throughout the community. We vowed never to venture near those waters again, forever shaken by what we had experienced. As time passed, we tried to return to our ordinary lives, plagued by memories of that night. Each time we closed our eyes, images of that monstrous being resurfaced in horrifying detail images that would remain etched deep within our minds. We would never forget those who fell victim to that seemingly otherworldly menace, their maimed remains serving as dreadful evidence that sometimes it's safer not to know what lies hidden in the night. And though it was impossible to forget the dread, one thing was certain. We would do all we could to avoid crossing paths with such a ghastly creature again. Our camping trip had transformed from an adventure meant for relaxation into a grisly encounter with something beyond our comprehension. It was now our mission to ensure that others would tread carefully into such darkness, bearing in mind what potentially lethal terrors might lurk just beyond their sight.